So this Muslim guy sent me the screenshot of a comment and asked me to address it, so I'll happily do it for everyone's education. And so you can respond properly to the heretics challenging the divinity of Christ, but before I address all the points, I want to define the incarnation of Jesus. In a remarkable union of divinity and humanity, the Son of God willingly took on human form, born as a baby in Bethlehem to the Virgin Mary. While fully God, he was also fully human, experiencing the complete human condition with all its limitations. Throughout his earthly life, Jesus encountered human emotions, faced challenges, and embrace the constraints inherent in being human while retaining his divine essence. This act of voluntary self-emptying exemplifies Jesus' deep love and compassion for humanity. He chose to live among us, sharing in our experiences, teaching us, and ultimately offering redemption through his sacrificial death and resurrection. So keeping that in mind, let's go ahead and address all these points. Jesus was tempted, God cannot be tempted, incarnation. Jesus was seen, no man has ever seen God. He means 1 John 4, 12. Like most Muslims, this guy has no idea that there's the Gospel of John and John's three epistles. But either way, this is talking about God the Father, not Jesus, and we know this by reading a couple verses down. Jesus was and is a man sent by God. God is not a man. Acts 2.22 is emphasizing the humanity of Jesus during his earthly ministry, which I explained in the Incarnation. Hosea 11.9 and Numbers 23.19 is taken out of context. It's emphasizing the distinction between God and humans. But again, this goes back to the Incarnation of Jesus, which points to the nature of Jesus as both fully God and fully human, without contradicting the fundamental truth that God is not a man in his essential divine nature. Jesus had to grow and learn. God doesn't ever need to learn. Incarnation. Jesus died. God cannot die. If by death you mean ceasing to exist, then no, Jesus did not die. Again, this goes back to the Incarnation. Jesus' human flesh experienced death and then was resurrected. Jesus grew weary. God cannot grow weary. Incarnation. Jesus slept. God doesn't sleep. Incarnation. Jesus wasn't all-powerful. God is all-powerful. John 5.19 is talking about Jesus' submission to the will of God the Father during his earthly ministry. Incarnation. Jesus wasn't all-knowing. God is all-knowing. Now, you can answer this with the Incarnation as well. I saw a few of you in the comments talking about this. Concerning Mark 1332, I hold to St. Augustine's point of view that Jesus deliberately chose not to reveal the day or hour, but both arguments lead to the same conclusion. As you can see, just about all the objections against the divinity of Jesus boil down to the Incarnation, and it shows those denying his divinity intentionally choose not to understand the Incarnation, which is their problem.